What's up guys, it's your favorite QB coach. Welcome to video number two of this kind of online course, the level one certification. In this video, we're gonna just basically do what we did in the first video, kind of watch a little bit about it, give you guys the main points, kind of add to the video, give you guys some more value. So let's go hop in. So some basic definitions, uh, biomechanical terms that we need to realize. So the first term we're gonna talk about is kinematics. Uh, and when I teach this to my undergraduate students in Los Angeles, um, I always tell them kinematics has an M in it and M stands for motion. And so uh, kinematics is the study of the description of motion. And so if I had to describe... Okay, so the main point of this video is gonna be the differences between kinematics and then kinetics. And then he's also gonna go into kind of some of the measurements used to kind of measure these. And then specifically at the very end, he's gonna show you, okay, these are all the measurements. However, really in golf, we're just gonna kind of be using these, right? So again, it's a great way, great introduction into these theories. And then for you golf instructors out there, you can really kind of understand which ones you really need to know. And then for you clients out there, I'm gonna to try to dumbify this whole thing and then also give you guys maybe some takeaway points that you can also know as well. So let's continue with this video. He's gonna go not only talking about kinematics as the definition, but also give you kind of some three things to think about. And also while this is on my mind, let me give uh, bring up maybe a dumbified example for you clients out there. Basically, if you're looking at, let's say like a Dustin Johnson, right? And you look at impact and you see that handle first position, you guys all wanna get there, right? Well, that is not actually kinematics. That is looking at a particular position in a point of time. So again, kinematics is the study of motion, which is throughout a period of time. So if you're looking at like the backswing or if you're looking at the downswing, that would more so be kinematics and you can use kind of a 2D camera or a 3D uh, motion capturing system, whatever, to look at that. That's kind of all you need to know right now. Let's go hop into the video though and kind of talk about some of the three things he's about to talk about. Motion, there's three things I need to know if I was gonna describe any motion to you. The first thing I need to know is how far you went. How many people drove here today? How far did you come? Six miles. Six miles, okay, so that is a measure of the distance he went. How long did it take you? 25 minutes. Let's say it took you half. Okay, so now he's going to start breaking down like the three things you need to know uh, with this. So the first one is how far you went, right? So basically the example he's giving here is, hey, how far did you drive to get to this seminar? If you drove, let's say 20 miles and it took you like 20 minutes to get here, you're going to be able to figure out how fast that you kind of got here, right? So that's what he's kind of going over right now. So I'm going to let him kind of finish this out. He's also going to start talking about accelerations here in a sec. So this is going to get pretty interesting. An hour, because it's going to make my math way easier. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, so if he went six miles and it took him half an hour, he went on average, how fast? Anybody do that math? 12. I can't. In my head. 12 <laughs> miles per hour, right? So you went 12 miles per hour. And what's 12 miles per hour a measure of? Miles per hour would be a measure of? How Speed, fast. exactly, right? So we can know how far you went. We need to know how long it took to calculate the average speed or how long, or... Um... Okay, so an example of this in the golf swing, let's say you wanna figure out how fast or the speed you went for your backswing. You'd have to figure out how far your backswing was. So from setup to the top of the swing, how far that was. And then also how much time it took you to get to the top of your swing. And then you can kind of figure out the speed of your backswing, right? So that would be an applicable way you could use it with um, kind of your golf swing. For you clients out there, an applicable way to kind of think about this is, hey, my uh, playing partner said that my backswing is way too quick or way too fast. Well, you can actually kind of use what he just talked about to maybe figure out, is it really too fast? Or is it maybe just certain sections of that that is too fast and just the overall time is okay, but you're just really fast on the takeaway, et cetera, whatever. This is kind of how you can apply this information if you're a client out there. Let's continue with this though, because he's gonna talk about acceleration. So let's continue with what he's talking about here. How quickly or how fast he went. And then we also need to know a third thing. The third measure that describes motion is something called accelerations, which is basically how quickly or slowly you speed up or slow down. Um, yeah. And so- So to give you guys, um, he, he's gonna give a great example here, but to give you guys an example uh, in a golf sense. So let's say, um, let's talk about kind of pelvic rotation, right? Cause that's a popular thing to talk about. If you, if you have a really fast pelvis or really fast hips, you hit the ball further, right? So an acceleration would be from the top of the swing through kind of on the downswing, right? How fast or how much did you accelerate those hips, right? So you need to know the total distance, how long it took you to get to that end point, And then you could kind of start measuring the total speed or the acceleration. He also then goes to talk about deceleration, which in that same example, the pelvis doesn't just consistently 
continue to accelerate, right? That'd be silly, you'd be spinning in circles forever. You eventually stop, right? So deceleration, again, is gonna be the opposite in that example. When your pelvis starts to slow down, you can actually find the deceleration numbers as well. So again, for you clients out there to kind of dumbify this, oh, my playing partners or my coach said I spin my hips too quick, right? So this would be an easy way for you to actually measure if you actually are and to get some great data upon it. And it just helps you, I think, make the changes a lot quicker because you can actually measure it now, which in the past you really couldn't measure. So that's kind of what he's talking about here. Now, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. Actually, no, first we'll go into kinetics. We'll give go that definition real quick as well. And then we'll skip ahead a little further to when he starts talking about some other things I think that are really interesting and probably going to be on the test for the certification. All of those things are simply describing motion. But then our other term is kinetics. And the, the, the study of kinetics is a study of the forces causing or resulting from motion. And so remember, things don't move without forces. So if we met... Okay, so he just kind of gave you the differences between the two. Again, kinematics is studying the description of motion and then kinetics actually cause that motion, right? So they're two separate things. And you could even argue that kinetics is almost more important than studying the description of motion. However, for you clients out there, the more applicable side is you probably can't measure your kinetics, right? Because you gotta buy a really expensive device to do that. So you're probably gonna go more so off the description of motion and then hopefully your instructor kind of knows what he's talking about so he can maybe give you some force feelings to maybe help you change those motions. However, for you clients out there, just understanding the basic definition does help. Now to give you guys maybe some analogies of that, um, again, these are not perfect examples, these are just analogies, but let's say you lost 57 pounds, right? Well, kinematics is more so describing you lost 57 pounds, and then kinetics is more so, okay, how did you lose that, right? What caused you to actually lose that? Or I made a 50% ROI on the stock market this year, right? Okay, well, yeah, you did that, but what actually caused you to do that, right? So hence, kinetics can be really powerful, especially if you can actually measure that to figure out what's actually causing you to do those motions that you're seeing on the video analysis. Because again, sometimes when you just start looking at positions and you try to start just changing positions, you're not really understanding what's actually the forces behind it that's causing you to do those positions, so it's difficult to change, right? So that's kind of how this can be ultra powerful for you guys out there. Um, we're going to skip ahead in this video because he does go start talking about some other really interesting things. So let's go skip ahead to that and then we'll also react to it. And so anytime we move, we can move in one of three ways. Um, if you look at this uh, skier going down a hill, if you look at any point on that skier's body, it's going to move through the same distance in the same amount of time. So if you look at their ear, their hip, their wrist, their knee, their ankle, all of those things are going to move the same distance in the same amount of time. We call that a linear translation. So that thing's moving linearly. It's translating as it moves down the hill. So there's one. Okay, to kind of break that down for you guys, maybe more so in a golf sense. So let's just say you're completely just moving linear, right? You're sliding. You're not really rotating yet. We're not going to go into kind of that form right now. But let's just say you're moving kind of linear. Well, he talked about linear translation, and that's kind of what it is. So my sternum, my left point on the shoulder right here, all of it's gonna be moving the same distance through that time, the same amount, is kind of what he's talking about. Now, what he's now gonna start talking about is actually something different, which is really interesting, and you kind of have to get the differences between these two. Now, if you're a little confused what I'm saying here, don't worry, once you start to hear all three of these movements, it's gonna make a lot more sense. So I'm gonna let it play through a little bit, and then we'll come back and talk a little more. The type of motion we can do is linear motion, and that happens in the golf swing. So if I go back to the top of the backswing, my trunk is going to translate so give me a golf on top example. of my front foot a lot of that time. Okay, so if this moves from here to here in a linear sense, that's a linear translation type motion. But that doesn't happen in isolation. While that's happening... Yeah, so what he meant there, it doesn't happen in isolation, is typically when you do move linear in the golf swing, you're also adding on angular, you're also adding on rotation. So it's not necessarily just linear, right? That's what he meant there. He's gonna explain a little bit more. Don't worry, don't get lost, guys. I will dumbify this, don't worry. We're also rotating. So we can move in a linear sense, which we call translations, or we can move in an angular sense, which we call rotations. And so if we do a hamstring curl on a hamstring machine in the gym, and we look at any point along my lower leg or my foot, it's gonna move through the same angle in the same amount of time, but it's not gonna move through the same distance. So if you think about it. Okay, so what he kind of means there is if you have an angle, you have a fixed point, right, to create that angle. 
So different parts of the body in this particular case, he's talking about the kind of the bottom part of the leg and the foot, different parts of the body are going to move different distances. However, they're going to move on that same fixed point. That's kind of what he's talking about right there, right? So to give this example that I have right ahead of me, this little hand moving here, the fixed point would be roughly right around here. However, the top of my hand moves much further than like, let's say the middle of my hand right here. However, they are moving on the same fixed angle, right? That's kind of what he's trying to talk about there. That's like the second form of movement. Let's get into the third form, which kind of combines the two. And this is really more so what you should know for golf. And he kind of gives some uh, really good insight here. In biomechanics, what we call that type of motion is just general motion, which is a combination of translations and rotations. So if you think of the downswing from here, I'm going to translate and rotate. All those things are going to happen simultaneously. And some people now are talking about this. Okay, so there you go. So there's general motion, which again is the combination of the both. He gave a great example there. As you're going into the downswing, a lot of people are going to be moving linear as well as rotating, right? So that would be a general motion. It's combining the two. This is the most important for you golfers out there because this is what all of you guys are doing. In terms of like practical sense of this, it's more so just of an understanding base. This is more so what I call golf nerd uh, terminology. It doesn't necessarily by itself is going to help you out. However, when combined with other sides of uh, information, it's going to be much more applicable for you. So once we watch more of these videos, as well as I'm going to be making some more videos here up on this series, which when you kind of see everything together, this type of information will be very, very useful. However, for now, let's just understand it. Let's just um, not understand it. Sorry. Let's just kind of memorize it, I guess you could say. And then we're going to kind of move on here. Now, he kind of goes through some more and ends out the video. However, the main other points that he's talking about is more so the measurements, right? So he goes through all the increments of measurement, and then he also tells um, basically which ones you're going to be using for the golf swing. So, for example, in the golf swing, we typically use like mile per hour, right, for speed. When we're talking about like rotation of the body, we typically use degrees, right? So those are kind of the two main forms that he talks about that we're going to be using. And again, to summarize this video, it's really just the basic definitions of kind of kinematics versus kinetics and then also the measurement tools and which ones you need to know. So I'm going to wrap up the video here because I feel like that's all we really need to go on this. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Let's get forward to video number three. Let's pass this certification and I hope you guys are enjoying this series so far.